Dr. Louis Machogu, he is the president of the Pharmaceutical, Pharmaceutical Society of Kenya. He's our guest this Health Friday. And to welcome him, CT has the day's proverb from Namibia. Yes, this is our final proverb from the Republic of Namibia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. As soon as a monkey has climbed a tree, it starts abusing from its elevated position. Mm. Say again. As soon as a monkey has climbed a tree, mm. it starts abusing mm. from its elevated position. As soon as a monkey climbs a tree, it starts abusing from its elevated position. Uh, Kari, mm. <laughs> what's the interpretation of this proverb? Uh, very profound. Uh, Sasaji, who is being called a monkey, but huh? um, <laughs> what what? Actually, it's actually very apt for me because um, uh, I'll take the angle of professionals. You know, mm. society gives us the mandate to serve them as mm. professionals. Mm. But we go up there and sometimes we get carried away. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so I think I understand that proverb and I'm challenged by it. You forget your true calling mm. and the trust that's been bestowed on you. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually a social contract, it's mm. the public. Who have said we cannot treat each other let there be a profession called pharmacy let them deal with be experts in medicine and take the responsibility and what they tell us we shall follow yeah mm. and can they also be accountable and do the right thing yes yeah. that's very true so the pharmaceutical society of kenya what is it yeah so thank you for this opportunity um the pharmaceutical society of kenya is the umbrella body of all pharmacists practicing in this country there are five thousand pharmacists uh, whom the country has registered to mm. practice um the profession the noble profession of pharmacy mm -hmm. um we are charged with the policy advocacy uh, public awareness what is the role of a pharmacist uh, many people don't know what the role of a pharmacist is that's what we do mm -hmm. we create awareness we are available on um, our website is www.psk.or.ke mm -hmm. we have a youtube channel we have a lot of uh, awareness campaigns medical camps uh, you know uh, training of our pharmacists upskilling them uh, linking them with international standards, WHO, mm. that's what we do, and um, ensuring that standards, also we, are, we uphold the code of ethics, mm. yeah, mm. because a profession is not a profession, no, if they don't abide to a code of ethics. By some that's code of ethics. Yes. Who's a pharmacist? It's a good question. So, um, a pharmacist is, is, um, is a healthcare champion. Mm -hmm. I would say it's a pharmacist is that person that intimate person you work with in that healthcare journey if you want to get well uh, you want to stay away from an illness let me use a personal example um i remember i've asked for permission from my my dad yeah mm. when he retired in 2000 unfortunately he had an illness a chronic illness mm. yeah um at that time i was studying at the university of, of nairobi mm. and he he had hypertension I'm saying he had because he doesn't have it anymore. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I remember him worrying, what is what will I do? How will I afford this medicine? Because the, uh, the his employer used to pay for him his medicine. At that mm -hmm. time, it was ten thousand Kenyan shillings. He's retired. Mm -hmm. His pension is not even. That's almost like twenty percent of his pension. Mm -hmm. So he's worried. Yeah, and it's actually even making his case even worse. Mm -hmm. I remember him reaching out to me and asking me, "I know you've gone to study pharmacy." Are there, is there someone there who can help me with this condition? Mm. And I was able to uh, onboard uh, him on a program with one of my lecturers. So a pharmacist who sits down with you at the primary level. What did the consultant specialist say? Yeah, mm. have you understood? What challenges are you having? Mm. So the patient will be able to say something like, oh, I didn't understand this medicine. Or you realize, okay, so let's tell the doctor. Mm -hmm. And we work as a team. Mm. So a pharmacist is that coach who helps you understand what are the treatment goals mm. where are you going what do you want where are you now what's preventing you from getting there mm. and we work with you and to your order to recovery and that's at the primary health level yeah okay pharmacists are also involved from drug discovery yeah mm. to uh, drug supply 
importing it, manufacturing it, mm. and also uh, availing it to the patient at the last mile. Yeah. Are they involved at that level? Because, you know, look, um, when we think about going to access healthcare, mm -hmm. you do your triage, you mm -hmm. go to the specialist, they see whatever's going on, mm -hmm. you may be sent to the lab, mm -hmm. and then you come back to the doctor, they do their thing, and they mm -hmm. tell you, go to pharmacy. Mm -hmm. The interaction is, well, this is what the doctor said, mm -hmm. here is your medicine, let's keep it moving. Mm -hmm. it, there really is little to none interaction beyond mm -hmm. um, that that where my drugs thing. let's go mm. um so what i hear you saying is that it ought to be or are there instances unless you speak the spe you, you seek the specialist care from a pharmacist mm. from a pharmacy mm. um where would that interaction then take take place because usually we take what the doctor has said in mm. terms of a diagnosis mm. and then we hear that the dispensing of medication or treatment then comes from pharmacy. yeah so where does this interaction Take yeah. place. Actually, the interaction is um, you, you've, that's a, a very good observation. The interaction happens at the at the point of care. Mm. You went um, saw a specialist or a, a, a general practitioner, and you are given a prescription. Mm. That's where it starts. Because someone needs to interpret that prescription. Mm. Someone needs to understand: Are you taking other medication? Mm -hmm. Is it? Are you even the right patient for this medication? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, however, there's been a challenge, mm -hmm. um, and this challenge comes from colonial times. Yeah. Um, we had we had uh, a situation where um, w when the colonialists left, they they w when they were here, they didn't allow professionals to be trained. So we we didn't have pharmacists trained. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, because of that, we don't. We started training pharmacists in this country under a presidential declaration in 1972. Mm -hmm. That's when our pharmacists started being trained. So the numbers were always low. Mm -hmm. When I graduated in 2005, we were only 1,900 pharmacists. Yeah. Right now, we are at 5,000, and they're actually unemployed pharmacists. Mm -hmm. The problem has been because there are few pharmacists. What the doctor had to do, everything prescribe for you, tell you everything, you know, but now, you know, the doctor doesn't have, we are many of us, mm. doctor doesn't have time to, to counsel, and you, it's, that's the case. On how to use the medicine. how to use the medicine, because actually, theirs is just to identify the issue that you have, mm. identify the medicine, and work with the pharmacist yeah. to give you, because we're all working, the patient is in the middle, mm -hmm. so there's a doctor here, there's a pharmacist, and maybe the lab, because we're all meant to work uh, as a team. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But because of that, maybe in the past there used to be few pharmacists in the country. Now that is not the case. So we are saying the case now is, you as a patient, can we move from the old way of just saying, here is a prescription. Mm -hmm. Give me the medicine. Yes. That's all. Stop arguing with the doctor. Yeah, okay. come give the medicine. Sema yeah? There are patients who come and take, give you the prescription. They know very well they'll not take the medicine. Mm. Yeah? And they feel embarrassed even coming back to the doctor and say, I didn't take the medicine. So mm -hmm. they, they lie. Mm -hmm. They say, I took the medicine. But the problem, the same patients come uh, a few years down the line, they are having their leg amputated because they didn't comply with the medicine. It's yeah. interesting that you say yeah. that because, again, it's mm -hmm. usually that this is what the doctor has said. So mm -hmm. the pharmacist will dispense according to the doctor's mm -hmm. instructions. Mm -hmm. My mother is a pharmacist and oh, I would okay. see her at the pharmacy. People would come with her prescription mm. and doctor has prescribed one two three yeah and because of the in a handwriting that only a pharmacist, a pharmacist can read, read. Yeah. i used to also ask <laughs> but then she would also suggest and mm. she would say you know what this is mm. your medication mm. but because of my understanding of pharmacology how about i s i ask you to also mm. add some vitamin b mm. or how about mm. i say you add this mm. to this because mm. i understand mm. what's happening here yeah is that what we're talking about that yeah. the interaction then yeah. can be more complete yeah. because then you understand the makeup of medicine mm. and the uh, the work that it will actually do in the body yeah. as opposed to here is two pills take them three times yeah. a day yeah yeah actually um, i would say it's, it's spot on patients actually shortchanging themselves mm. when they come to the uh, pharmacist and all they say is just give me as is mm. yeah you're leaving so much on the table yeah that pharmacist is able to um even make intervention because remember this medicine could have drug drug interactions like you're saying mm -hmm. there's a medicine we need to add mm -hmm. number one there's a medicine we need to remove there's a medicine we need to stop mm. and maybe remove and replace or medicine just stop because now it's no longer in use you find many patients who've been taking uh medicine that are causing ulcer a painkiller that's causing ulcer mm -hmm. and they've been living with ulcers 
<laughs> but they've been taking the medicine because it works. Mm. No one has ever, because I got a prescription. You never got to spend five to ten minutes, which is the recommended time you should spend with your pharmacist. Mm -hmm. But let me ask you this yeah. question. Yeah. Then the pharmacist, even in a hospital, should be behind the counter. Mm -hmm. Should they also have a booth so that when you leave the doctor, you go to the pharmacist mm -hmm. before you actually go to where the medicine is dispensed? Because mm -hmm. in all honesty, when you are at that counter, there are very many of you. Mm -hmm. That pharmacist will have the same challenge as the doctor. Mm. He will not have the time to explain. Yeah. So, but when you are sitting... It's a consultation. Or a exactly. Consultation, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. The doctor has time because mm. it's you and the doctor. Mm. We don't have that with the pharmacy. Because uh, the practice that I see in the hospital mm. is an assembly line. Mm. Next. You, you hand it over, go and sit down over there mm. and wait. We'll be called. City Muga. Uh, Take this one mm, two times yeah. three. Mm, 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 any yeah. This one ten times a day. This one, of water. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of, in fact, plenty of water. You especially. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Then, so, I that opportunity is missed. Yeah, uh, that's the old design of uh, the assembly line, like, uh, like what you're saying. Is it old? But it still exists. No, we are actually seeing it moving. Uh, like where? So let me give you an example. Um, go today to MTRH. In in um, Moy teaching, Moy and, teaching referral and referral hospital, hospital in Eldoret mm -hmm. or Kilifi County uh, Hospital. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me use public. Um, we, we have hospitals. Been to Kilifi Public Hospital. So yeah. tell us. Yeah, you know, the county are, hospital. So uh, even even Coast General were also done by internship. Yeah, mm. um, you'll find there's um, um, there are specialist pharmacists first of all who do ward rounds. Yeah, so we've been admitted to a hospital. You're under a certain regime of medication yes. or treatment. You have a illness, mm -hmm. you've been prescribed medicine. There should be a pharmacist who goes with your treatment sheet and see what is the progress you are on. If you're not getting that, you need to demand. This is absolutely it. new. Yeah, it is actually happening. And I'm saying public hospitals so that even the private ones can say what are they doing. Yeah. So the public should demand yeah, for this service because they are there. You know, yeah. I'm opposed. Mm. You're saying that yeah. A pharmacist is supposed to do this and they are allowed by even the law yes uh, because it sounds to me like a pharmacist is also participating in the prescription yeah it is called drug selection you know because this pharmacist has been as we have uh, just from uh, heard that the pharmacist also has been trained in um, the pharmacotherapeutics yeah? Mm. They understand this patient. They actually clerk the patient and find out what are you on? What are they? They look at the entire notes mm. and work as a team. Because here, yeah, it's about outcomes. Create a treatment plan right when you are in the inpatient. Yeah. Yeah? So you have clinical pharmacists. Mm. That's what they are called. And they are there in Moi uh, Teaching and Referral. They are there in Kilifi County. And, and Coast even General. Coast General and many other hospitals. Yeah? Well, I, the many things. They start there. Okay, yeah? sorry. And okay. the Pharmacy and Poisons Board mm. is a regulator mm -hmm. that gives them that right uh -huh. yeah, to be able to practice at that level. Yeah? So they're actually registered to practice. You know, I'm asking that. It's mm. because... Mm. Because of what we are used to, mm. now when you go to a pharmacy and the sub person starts telling you, to you, we're changing this and the other, you mm. always feel, this guy is either, he's, he's in business. Mm. He's the one who is selling me the you, medicine. You, you so he's basically changing. Cost. Yeah. He's changing what the doctor has recommended for me yeah. so that he can make an extra buck out of it. Mm. Or because he doesn't have this medicine here, he don't want to send me elsewhere, so he's giving me something that is a substitute that mm. may not necessarily work as well as mm. my expert doctor mm. Mm. recommended mm. for me. Mm. Mm. So you're saying mm -hmm. that actually a pharmacist mm. should, be involved in should be involved in this drug selection. What yeah. what a doctor after they sit down with you, they identify what the issue is, mm. what their prescription is. Mm. I'm prescribing this kind of treatment. Mm. And then you also now come in and say, all right, so understanding your history, your mm. your body type, your everything, what else you're on and all, mm. this is for this this treatment that the doctor has prescribed. Mm -hmm. This is the actual product. Mm. Exactly, yeah. So it's actually the doctor prescribes for you water. Mm -hmm. Now you come to the pharmacy, Tell Actually, you. the pharmacist is standing there with the doctor at in the in the ward round, for example. Okay. But in the community now, at retail level, the the prescription came from somewhere else. Yes. So when you come at the at the pharmacy, the first thing you should do is first look at the credential of the person who's, because you know there are also many people out there who are masquerading to be pharmacists. We'll come to that. So you should be able to. Mm. Every pharmacy should 
uh, present their pre credentials, they actually even have a photo. I mean, if you're entering an Uber and you actually look and say, are you the driver? Before you even are served by that person who says they are a pharmacist, ask, are you a pharmacist? And at the Pharmacy and Poisons Board website, you can actually see their photo, even though it's the same thing that, that is there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But, and, I'm, but I'm president. Uh -huh. <laughs> news. Am, am, I, am I sharing news? <laughs> you know, it's not news. What, what, what you're saying makes perfect sense. Mm, okay. But who, who beyond, apart from you, who else has this knowledge? Who knows this? Yes, yes. Mm. I mean, in all, in all honesty, yeah, huh? yeah. even those who are listening, how many of you know that this thing actually is supposed to happen? Actually, it would be nice to hear Paul for from the Paul, you know, from the uh, listeners. Well, let's see the, the let's see com by comment yeah. on our YouTube and Facebook. Mm. Those yes. who are watching the live yeah. stream, and that's why we are here. Just yeah. here. Mm. Do you actually know? Have you come across? What we are hearing from the president of the Pharmaceutical Society of Kenya, Dr. Louis Machogu, you know, in terms of how pharmacists should and how they have started working. Now that we have more and more pharmacists mm. being trained and being registered in the country, are we seeing that? Mm. So once you go to this pharmacy, mm. you're saying we've identified that the person that you're dealing with there is an a pharmacist, professional. Yeah, yeah. A professional, yeah. Is the person behind the counter only a pharmacist? It's a good question. So, in the in the country, there are, at the patient facing end, there are three people who are allowed to handle medicines because medicines in this country are scheduled. Yeah, there's narcotics and controlled medicines. Mm -hmm. That is only a pharmacist who's meant to handle that medicine mm. because of some training and competence. Because someone can actually abuse it and become dependent on it, or even. You uh, misuse it or uh, take it and go and use it for another purpose. Mm -hmm. We've seen it's happened. Yeah. So the next schedule is prescription only. So you get a prescription and someone is able to uh, dispense that. Yeah? Um, then you have pharmacist only. Then you have pharmacy only. A pharmacy only will be handled by a pharmacy technician mm -hmm. under the supervision of a pharmacist mm -hmm. to, so that you have access. You know, there are places where pharmacy, uh, pharmacists aren't there. Um, I used to work in Samburu. You have, um, uh, in the offshoots, mm -hmm. you have pharmacy technicians. So then you all collaborate. Because remember, it's for the patient. Mm -hmm. yeah? Then the last one is Dukala, um, in the supermarket. You'll mm -hmm. find some medicines, mm -hmm. Panadol, and things like that. Yeah? So those are the three kind of people. So there's a pharmacist. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a specialist pharmacist. Mm -hmm. There's a pharmacist, pharmaceutical technologist. And uh, 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 the I, I so this, this, let's start from uh, in a hospital. Mm -hmm. When you told who will you find? And a public pharmacy. Yeah. Who will you find? You need to find a hospital pharmacist. Services. You need to find a pharmacist. That's a pharmacist that yes. will be there. You need to find a pharmacist. But, but do we find pharmacists? So we are finding some hospitals like cutting corners. Hmm. Yeah. Um, and they so give who do you they someone. Have there? So they might find you may find they have a pharmacy technician as is no, uh, known by WHO. Okay. Yeah. Or sometimes you find they're not even someone who has been moving around in the hospital. They've been cleaning around here and they're hearing Billy Maratatu. Then they put that person there because someone, they're cutting costs. Or someone who yeah. can read the doctor's handwriting. Yes. yes. <laughs> they will pretend that they, are, they can read. Yeah. But yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, in what crazy circumstance? Yeah. Well, I guess it's not so crazy because yeah. if it's something that can be documented, it happens. Mm. That you would have some random person. Okay, you've been here, you've heard the word tetracycline three, mm. few, four, four times. Amoxicillin. Uh -huh, and mm. you know that if the prog if the diagnosis is a, a <laughs> bacterial <laughs> infection, we mm. know, okay, we can give mm. amoxicillin. Mm. This person yeah. is then allowed to be behind the counter and dispense medication based on prescription yeah. without an understanding mm. of what's really happening mm. and that's okay yeah i, I don't um <laughs> actually okay you're right huh? and um it's actually sad yeah it's a sad state of affairs and it's not where we want to be as a nation but uh, so we have we have um, the role is two-pronged there's a public need mm. to also ask who is this who's serving you mm. because you, you are the one who's taking your patronage to this place yeah, who is this who's serving you? Do they have the qualifications and competencies to be able to serve you? And you are seeing uh, someone who um, we've actually been seeing cases where a patient comes to you, has been taking liver antibiotics, yeah, mm. um, diabetes medication. Mm. They've been taking the same medicine, yeah. Maybe like if you have been prescribed for uh, de uh, Desani, mm. you are given 
um, because they don't know it's another brand called Aquamist, mm. they gave you both Aquamist and Desani at the same time. Yeah. Mm. So this patient has been taking two double, di- double dose of, and that's why they are collapsing. You know, their uh, their diabetes is not getting better. So the, it's very critical. That's why we are saying at the, at that point where you are receiving your medicine, discover first who is this who is serving. So we are going step by step yeah. in my yeah. question. So yeah. at, in a hospital. Mm. That pharmacy, I should find a pharmacist. You need to find a pharmacist. All level four hospitals upwards and above. You should find a pharmacist. Level two, three. three a, mm-hmm. um, you need to find a pharmaceutical technician who then works under supervision of a pharmacist from level four. So there'll be a pharmacist from level four somewhere, yes. but then this they all work as a team. technician is yeah. also trained. It's yes. like KMTC trained yeah, and yeah, such, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. In these things that we find in our estates, 24-hour mm. pharmacy, yes. 24-hour pharmacy, yes. Yes. we can't have 5,000 pharmacists working in public Mushrooming. hospitals and yeah. working 24 hours in a p- p- public pharmacy. Mm. So who are we finding in these 24-hour pharmacies that are across the country? You, you'll be, and, and we, we need to challenge our members of public, and I think I want this to be participatory, yeah? We are, uh, we are you f- people are commenting. Go around yes. and uh, look at your favorite 10 pharmacies in your neighborhood, mm. yeah? Go and do a poll. The person, they need to give you the credentials. Confirm. You'll find out of every 10, yeah? You'll find out of every 10, two might be pharmacists. Oh, sorry, two will be pharmacists. You'll find four at uh, technicians oh. and the rest you'll find a quacks but, but let me ask no, you a quacks a quacks, quacks. They, they, they have no training like oh, me whatsoever. now i go and yeah, yeah. because yes. you yes. have the money you started a pharmacy and, you and maybe there was a need yeah. to be mm. to be honest there could have been a need but yeah. el president <laughs> uh, the who <laughs> is allowed to carry a license and who licenses yes so city, that's a good question. Who licenses is a pharmacy and poisons board. Okay. Yeah. They give a license to, according to the schedules that I've just given, yeah? Mm. They give a license to a pharmacist and a pharmaceutical technician. Technician. They both get. They all get licenses according to their scopes of practice. Mm. The same way, and actually right now we have a third license of a specialist pharmacist. The one I told you who is in the world rounds, who's working with the, the neurosurgeon. Top, top level. You know, like that, yeah? Because mm. uh, we need the progression, career progression, okay. and so that we can serve the country. Mm. Yeah? Okay. The way globally, we should not all go to South Africa or US because of this. We need to have competencies there locally. So right. these are the people who are licensed to serve Kenyans, yes. What's the difference between a pharmacy and a, and a chemist? A pharmacy and a chemist. It's it's just a terminology. terminology. An apothecary. <laughs> yeah, an apothecary. Uh, and and nowadays you're seeing chains of pharmacies coming. Yeah, um, <laughs> it's just a a, a a language that they use. Yeah, and okay. and what what is happening with the pharmacy and poisons board um, to help us differentiate the levels of practice? Mm. Um, the pharmacy and poisons board, together with the Pharm- pharmaceutical society of Kenya, we are working to differentiate pharmacists where you can actually, to make it easier for you to see a pharmacist, and you'll be seeing a green cross there, yeah? You are going to a pharmacy, you see a green cross, at least it alerts you that there's a pharmacist there, but mm. even when you go inside, demand to see the credentials, so that you're able to see who is this who's serving you, and are they serving you as per their levels of competence. Wow. Because remember, uh, Eric, let me just add something. Um, mm. the, health, the constitution of the country, under Article 43, demands that you need to have the highest level of Healthcare. Healthcare. Yep. Yeah. But go further to Article 46. It says you have consumer rights. Mm. No one should, actually, even that pharmacist, if they mishandled you in a way or the other, of the technician, or that person who's masquerading, you have a right to seek redress from the pharmacy and poison board, and PSK is there to help you on that matter. The president of the Pharmaceutical Society of Kenya, Dr. Louis Machogu, is our guest on this Health Friday, and we are asking you to share with us your thoughts, everything that he's told us today mm-hmm. in terms of what we should expect mm-hmm. from pharmacies. Mm-hmm. Is this news to you or is it something that you knew to be happening? Sample some of those comments. What are people saying? Okay. Have they ever heard of these things that Dr. Machogi is telling us? Uh, well, interestingly, so um, no. Most pharmacists act like technicians and technologists despite their six-year training, Mm -hmm. only interested in dispensing. Mm -hmm. This is one thing that somebody says. Moffat says, this is actually true. 
Pharmacists play a pivotal role in medication therapy, management, and in fighting antimicrobial resistance. Mm. The question is, do pharmacists still give their licenses to quacks for display at the pharmacy chemist shops and get a return for that? Mm. The quack operates under some kind of license. Mm -hmm. um, in my year experience... Okay, so what are we looking at here? In my year experience... Uh, Scroll up. Pinakata ko scroll. Pinakata buona. Ah, voila. Um, in my six-year experience, the only pharmacist who ever attended the ward round was at Nakuru PGH. Mm -hmm. God bless her soul. Can't recall the name, but she was one of the great helps. So that was mm -hmm. something that stood out. Mm -hmm. um, all the pharmaceuticals should have inspectors, is what mm -hmm. somebody says. Um, Qua ground mambo ni different. Mm. That's what a majority of doctors will direct you to their own pharmacy shops. And are you sure pharmacists can alter a doctor's prescription? Mm. Even suggest medicines? Isn't that why we have drug resistance cases? This chairman um, is showing us that pharmacists are very smart, articulate people. Okay. First of all, we need to ask this per if the pharmacist will be paid consultation. Um, so mm. this is it. That first of all, there you, is. You start introducing that other room. Mm. <laughs> uh, any extra room is more money. Mm. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, mm. Interesting. Interesting uh, reactions. And uh, and do thanks for reading for us those. And I mean, you first of all, you said something about quacks. And um, um, like I said, if we went and sampled, you'll find that the and this is a challenge of a developing nation. Yeah. Like I said, we didn't have enough pharmacies. Today we have. Um, and I think if you've had Kempidiwe before, they are actually over 4,000 unemployed doctors, pharmacists, mm. and dentists. Yeah, medical doctors, pharmacists, and dentists. And this begs the question if you're not accessing a pharmacist, mm. what is the issue? The issue, and I think let's, let's empower ourselves. Like I said, Article 46 of the Constitution empowers you to get to get uh, you have consumer rights you need to demand mm. you know you're the one who's going to pay for those services you, you're not unempowered you're actually empowered by the constitution you should actually go ahead and demand and say are you a pharmacist now you have no business going back to that pharmacy if they don't have a pharmacist mm. now there are things a pharmacist should do for you mm -hmm. they they can help with your um, the, the prescribers prescribe the medication. It could be a clinical officer or it could be a pharmacist, uh, a, a doctor. medical doctor, mm -hmm. yeah, or even a specialist. Okay. Yeah, the prescription has come. Now, you can't afford the prescription. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. the pharmacist sits there and understands. Okay, could there be a generic? Mm -hmm. Could there be an alternative? Mm -hmm. You know, it's not the end. You find now when you find a quack or someone who's not a pharmacist, what they'll do, they just give you half the dose. Yeah. <laughs> that does not serve you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You need to get the full dose. So with a pharmacist, they're able to look at the economics part. Mm -hmm. They need to look at holistically of you. What else are you taking? Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. What else are you embarrassed that you didn't tell the doctor right. on that other side? Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, I haven't been taking this medicine. I've just been going back there. Yeah. Now the pharmacist then works in an interdisciplinary. We are the same level with your medical doctor. Mm. I'll call and say, by the way, this patient. We are working for this patient. Mm. Indio, she, this is the problem that they have right now, mm. where they have they have to eat a cassava meal every night. Mm. Now cassava meal interacts with this medicine in this way. Mm. Yeah. Can we make the prescription to be in the morning? Okay. Yeah. This patient feels that they have uh, this medicine gives them importance. Mm. They have not told you. Mm. Yeah. But me as a pharmacist, the patient trusts me. Yeah. Or I have more time with them. Mm. And I'm able to come back and give relay that information. Mm. And together we work and mm. alter that prescription and give you the one that you'll go that home works with for you. And give you a treatment plan that works for you. Mm. We are not working here for drug manufacturers. Mm. We are here to work for you as a patient. So that you get and everyone else gets to benefit yeah mm. um that's really the role of a pharmacist joy salamu asks an interesting question here how will people ask for credentials how mm. how do you do that somebody's mm. behind war has won the the lab code he says i want to be sure that you're a pharmacist mm. show me your id i mean mm. and then mm -hmm. can there be a database of license well i think you you alluded yeah. to that mm -hmm. um for people to use to counter check with photos names you said that that exists, it exists but i'm imagining it. that the majority of people who are seeking treatment mm. number one don't have that wherewithal to go 
on and be checking if this person's picture this, appears yeah, there. Yeah. And at that point, really, the concern is treatment. Mm. Like you say, sometimes mm. it's will my shilling actually be enough mm. for this money okay. that I'm spending? Because we still do have a lot of m majority of the spending for treatment is out of pocket mm. without mm. social funds kicking mm. in and all of that. Mm. So mm. at that point, is that individual vested in is this the person usually the white coat is the emblem of authority authority yeah, mm. yeah. so if that is one it's understood this person knows what they're doing mm. so then to start to ask the question but then also there is this huge danger mm. because i hear what you're saying is that there could be a lot of people mm. today mm. who are being treated mm. with medication mm. that if there was a conversation had it could be tweaked a little bit and we will see a better offering on health mm. that's a big thing that's a big, big deal yeah, yeah. that we should actually be thinking about mm. that are people then consuming medication that they ought not to be yeah 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 you know how do yeah. you start asking the question of are you a pharmacist before i start telling you are you <laughs> sure you're not giving me something that's going yeah, to interact but, with yeah. what Mr. i'm President, ingesting yeah, yeah yeah is that really the patient's duty i mean if mm. if you have a board mm. that licenses and ensures that people who practice as pharmacists mm. have the qualifications mm. should they not then go the extra mile to ensure that where they apply their trade whether it's in a hospital or not mm. that the person whom the patient is encountering because mm. i want to take this thing to its logical conclusion okay you go to a school and you're told this is teacher x teaching your children say so, mm. excuse me i want to see your qualifications mm. Mm. your tsc number let it no, tsc number i forget mm. your qualification mm. tsc number you could have created this um, is um, kenya um, 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 <laughs> okay you've, okay who was your classmate mm. Okay. Mm. <laughs> what i'm trying to say is if you take this argument to its logical conclusion mm. we'll ask this of everyone mm -hmm. but should they not be for instance you don't ask an MP to remove their credentials. We know they've been elected because we know the process. Yeah. And we see them taking the oath of office. And they're MPs. So we know they were Shimura. And we also know they were Shimura for five years. Mm -hmm. Now, surely, when it comes to something as important as the business, mm -hmm. of that, the that, yes, mm -hmm. exactly, mm -hmm. should then not the board that license these people... So you want the regulator to be more... You know, proactive, proactive yeah. in enforcement. Yes. Actually, actually, the regular has been proactive. If mm. you see <clears throat> time to time, they do crackdowns. Mm. And the problem with that is, you go to Uruma, Karen. You've started on this road doing a crackdown. Someone has already sent an SMS or WhatsApp, kume, and kume. everyone else has yeah, kume, yeah. Uh, but doesn't it occur to you that you're doing it wrongly? Mm. How is, uh, please? Uh, how, how else could it be that? Ah, yeah. 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 In Bakumi. Uh, don't, do, don't do it. Don't do crackdown. It is yeah. a Regular. crackdown. Yeah. Yes. I mean, how do you ensure precisely? Mm -hmm. Because a crackdown, as you say correctly, mm -hmm. it's like with the alcohol blow. Mm -hmm. you'll, you'll arrest the first two people. Mm -hmm. After that, an SMS will be sent and everybody will know the police are in this place. Yeah. Yeah. This is Kenya. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and also a crackdown is punitive. Mm -hmm. Why is it that we are not ensuring that the people who are actually serving the citizens mm. are actually who they are? Mm. Okay. So let me let me take this back to the power, and um, uh, I think do uh, you said something about who has the power? Mm. Mm. Yeah, I would say the person who pays has the power. Mm. In this country, maybe fifteen percent or eighteen percent of uh, healthcare costs are paid by insurance. So that person has the power. Right. Yeah, that person can say. Give us your credentials before we onboard you so that you when you are sent you our patients there mm. they'll be served right mm. yeah mm. that is not happening mm. so we are creating awareness that that should be happening uh number two the other person who has power is a patient because the person the caregiver or the patient themselves because, because they're paying with their shilling mm. if today someone was going to build for you a house you know you'll ask for the credentials you asked it once okay. then thereafter actually no yeah no you, most people don't ask you don't ask no use reference where has he built mm. yeah the, 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 yeah that's exactly yeah. Yes. yeah yeah but now you need to go a step further because you only do it once because mm. once you do it and I need, I need to encourage our i mean if you have a chronic illness you shouldn't be hoping through pharmacies you need to have a family pharmacy you know a place where yeah, keep your history yeah you keep your history you know you, you're not just jumping so that you can get value from the entire healthcare continuum right so i think we are saying let's be empowered as well you, we know the challenges of the government you know government agencies if mm. government agencies will to will, will uh, uh, if you challenge them to do this better they'll come back to you and say give us more money mm. yeah but we as the consumers we are the ones paying 
we actually 80% over 80% of us pay cash mm. yeah we should actually go there and say i have a chronic illness and this i want a treatment plan on this ailment yeah i've seen as a pharmacist uh, through my colleagues who are specialists and others as well who have taken many patients off chronic medication by diligently working with you and and that's the value you want every want actually in 10 years this is our strategic plan as PSK yeah we want in 10 years every patient has a family pharmacist mm -hmm. yeah mm. in the spirit of bottom up you know community empowerment so that you are actually empowered to to e story uh, my diabetes should not be your story mm. should, don't, you shouldn't be owning her uh, you should only be owning my pharmacist or my you know my healthcare provider we are working towards you know eliminate the enemy is one The But you're saying, yeah. President, as as a basic minimum, mm. when you walk into a pharmacy, mm. there should be at least a, a photo, license. a license. Yeah, a photo license. There should license. be something there that I see. Yeah. First of all, that this facility is licensed. Yeah. And that the people who are here, these are their licenses. Yeah. To make a it easier. Yeah. To make it easier, we Framed. actually. Yeah. We actually. It should actually. If someone cannot frame their license, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, there's something wrong there. Yeah. yeah. They should actually uh, print it in color. Because it gives, it's given annually, mm. a photo license annually given, printed in color and framed, together with their membership to the Pharmaceutical Society of Kenya. Because that's how you know they have uh, are subscribed to the code. Mm. They should actually print the code of ethics, and it's actually one page and sign mm. the things that they are saying that they will do for you. Mm. Yeah, and, and abide by. Yeah, and on the on the other side, of course, the license for the premises. Okay. Yeah. Now, an issue about regulators. Mm. I I can understand why the Pharmacy and Poisons Board mm -hmm. would be regulating mm -hmm. uh, the pharmacies. Mm -hmm. uh, because we're talking about now the product that mm -hmm. is in there. They're the ones that say this product is then allowed to be to sold be and country. be consumed in the country. Mm -hmm. So for every product that is in the country, it must be passed and approved by the Pharmacy and Poisons Pharmacy. Board. Yes. I don't understand why they need to be the ones who regulate the healthcare Pro providers the practitioners mm -hmm. because on the other side we have mm -hmm. the kenyan medical practitioners and, and dentists, dentists council, council. Mm -hmm. yeah. why are pharmacists being licensed by somebody else somebody by else. a different entity mm -hmm. and, and they're in the same same forest mm -hmm. um of course there's uh, i mean th that's a good question you know the tools of trade of a pharmacist is the medicine yeah and uh, traditionally that has been you know they've been regulated together but what we are seeing um is a shift towards you know in africa across africa um globally is to have a single regulator for all medicines veterinary medicines uh, health products radiology equipment all those things in one place regulated in one place the different experts who are then sitting in those councils and to be able to offer their technical expertise mm. and that's why we have uh, currently we have the Kenya Drug and Authority Bill mm -hmm. to do that uh, at the same time PSK together with the Ministry of Health are working towards making a pharmacy practitioners bill that will regulate the practice of pharmacists and pharmaceutical technicians as as they are recognized by the WHO and ILO yeah so the the spirit of that is to be able to give each focus mm. yeah because the challenge we've been having in this country is um the public are not confident that the generic medicine i got is of the right quality yeah yeah or uh, or even the locally manufactured medicine so we want a separate regulator to ensure from the animal medicines to the human medicines they are regulated in one place and focus is given to that Number two for practice, pharmacists again take on the other side. So you have a council just like the Kenya Medical um, the Medical Practitioners and Dentists. Why council. not join that council? Uh, mm -hmm. It's well, a good. It's, a, it's what, I mean, what you what people, you, you what, as, is there something as that practitioners, us? Yeah. as mm -hmm. practitioners, yeah. you've already joined that as a union, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Kenya Medical Practitioners, and Pharmacists dentists, and yeah, Dentists yeah, Union, yeah, right? Yeah. So yeah. doctors, mm -hmm. dentists pharmacists are in the union mm -hmm. but then you separate when it comes to regulation mm -hmm. why mm -hmm. you've already shown the way mm -hmm. why are you creating a separate bill that will mm -hmm. take you away from 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 this council mm -hmm. what is the historical problem because this is clearly historical <laughs> yes the the <laughs> there is um, I mean, you have to look at globally what is the practice, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, Latif, no, no, uh, that's that's a good question. Thanks, thanks for that. Globally, there's uh, the best practice. 
pharmacists have their counsel mm -hmm. you have nurses have their counsel yeah you have uh, m m dentists even have their in some countries dentists have their own counsel yeah and so on and so forth so ideally if you are to ask me um uh, and in kenya we 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 took up the colonial laws mm. and you know we just took what has just been there we just it. domesticated it but as you are saying we're where we are moving towards yeah and i've seen kmpdu uh, as a union has really helped us and worked and you know everyone belongs there mm -hmm. so as the pharmaceutical society of kenya um and I, I believe i can speak on behalf of, of all pharmacists yeah um and even other healthcare workers if you have a house yeah so what you're talking about is to have one house yes what are the efficiencies that will come out of that you know there'll be a lot of efficiencies yeah mm. first of all me as a taxpayer i'll be paying to one to you know one regulator, one regulator it's strong it I does all complain it. about a nurse yeah a pharmacist a you, dentist you go to a hospital to, to register it it's one place you yes. know like that yeah uh it makes sense mm. yeah now we will have to use very solomonic wisdom <laughs> to ensure that the structure of this entity yeah um i think it's not going to work does not favor one uh, person over the other it's, you know it's, no, so it's, it's not that is why, the, if you're is asking it? me what is the challenge <laughs> the challenge will be um uh, would sibling rivalry what is called sibling would we but you see it can work let, let me say it can work eh? why why hasn't, why hasn't it worked then it can work because all of us as professionals in this country belong to one umbrella body yes. it's called apsia association yes. of professional of east africa even mm. you journalists you belong all of you there mm. all of us as professionals so all of us as, uh -huh. people want their own unions which they're in charge of mm -hmm, mm -hmm. this thing why is the east african community taking so long to sort out because yeah yeah because because each country wants you, precisely so if you're a asking pharmacist me is why not a medical doctor a yeah. dentist is not a veterinary doctor mm -hmm. yeah. but the question i want to ask is mm. do those who are in the practice of purveying alternative medicine mm. do they fall under your purview the pharmacy and poisons board mm. yes. so there's a the bill that's in place yeah uh, it's called the traditional healers and that's a practice yeah the you know you have someone who gives you mitishamba you go and yeah, you, yeah. yeah that's that's their practice yeah that's why you know now will you lump all of us together you know well to, to, uh, you know how, how we like let all practice you all have the same clan you're yeah. dealing with one mm. body the body, clan is the same. Adam. in a utopia that should be fine ah, yeah you see you've answered my we are, we are not so in this. utopia yet <laughs> okay one day in that utopia president kibaki saw in vision <laughs> of we will get there so but there's a question also then going towards <laughs> utopia and i think it's something that's a big deal please Sorry. please yeah no, no, it is, yeah, yeah. Bogwa and Jerry asked this really quickly, and yeah. I think it's important. Fake drugs, mm -hmm. counterfeit drugs. Mm -hmm. You go to many pharmacists in the middle of the city, back street, whatever. Mm -hmm. How can you be sure that what you're getting is it's legit? It's legit. It's legit, yeah. Um, now, first of all, the easiest way of get, ensuring that you get legit medicines yeah, mm -hmm. is by first ensuring that the person serving you is a pharmacist okay. in developing in the developing world over 30 percent of medicines 10 to 30 percent depending on the strength of the regulation in kenya we are at a regulation level one mm. the highest is le regulation level four or five even six yeah mm. um the highest in, in africa is three tanzania kenya we are at one mm. yeah for you for you to have the confidence mm. that the medicine in your, in your regulatory system is safe yeah you have to make sure the person serving you is a pharmacist so that they are able to ascertain the person responsible for procuring the medicine and bring because they are taking a responsibility mm -hmm. like i said um article 46 of the constitution gives you consumer rights you can actually sue that person if they gave you medicine that sort of so to be quality. sure that what yeah. you're taking is legit first of all make sure that the person dispensing it is yeah. legit is legit yeah just yeah. start there yeah so you have at least have something mm -hmm. to hold on to yeah yeah, yeah. Sure. And you can sue someone if that happens. Okay. Yeah. Now, if you take yourself to a back street, then you are alone. Yeah. Then the back street is legit. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Ari, thank you very much for joining Asante. us. Asante. Dr. Louis Machogu is the president of the Pharmaceutical Society of Kenya. He's been here this Health Friday educating us about pharmaceutical and pharmacists and the farm techs and what we should be expecting for our healthcare. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day.